What does it mean to be a mystic? I looked it up on dictionary.com and, and they provided this definition. A mystic is a person who claims to attain or believes in the possibility of attaining insights into mysteries transcending ordinary human knowledge as by direct communication with the divine or immediate intuition to a state of spiritual ecstasy. I looked up other definitions online and I found them communicating the same thing. And what's interesting to me about that is I've studied a lot of mystics, their writings. I've read them, I've prayed with them, I've used them for spiritual reading, I've, I've studied the history, and I don't think any of them would agree with this definition. And I think that's very curious. So our understanding of what mysticism is, or the popular understanding of what mysticism is, is very different from what the mystics themselves would say about what it means to be a mystic. So that's what I want to talk about today. What it means to be a mystic and, and where are the openings for mysticism in our life. And as I do, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel as well as to click the bell so you're notified of future videos. As I've said, I, I've studied the writings of, of many mystics, including Teresa of Avila, Meister Eckhart, Abraham Heschel, Hafiz, and Rumi, and, and several others. And as I look across the traditions and across their writings, trying to get a big picture understanding, the mystics don't seem to think that there's anything really special about their experience that's about extraordinary knowledge or, or an insight that no one else can have. Most of them don't even use the term. I think in our popular understanding of mystic gets confused with the idea of being a Gnostic or Gnosticism. A Gnostic is someone who believes that there's special knowledge. The word Gnostic is taken from the Greek word gnosis, which means knowledge or to know. And a Gnostic is someone who believes that they have insight from a spiritual realm that's unique, that isn't accessible to other people. So they may have a secret or a revelation that's unique that no one else can have. So that they're special in some way because of that. But the mystic writers across the great traditions believe that, yes, mysticism is an experience, but it's an experience that's open to everyone. It's part of spiritual growth and development. It's the direction in which we all should be heading. And that direction is towards union and communion with the divine, with spirit, with the source of all life. Mysticism is about experiencing that depth of wonder in the experience and presence of God, of the divine, of however we understand that essence that's greater than any of us and that holds the universe together. Mysticism is both transcendent and it's imminent. It's transcendent in that it pulls us beyond our ordinary awareness into the experience, into the communion and union with the divine, with the holy, with the sacred we find a sense of coming together, of being with the other in that experience. So it's transcendent in that way. It's imminent so far as it's an experience that happens in us and is based on our real life experience. You know, it, it's something that, that we experience and often based on our daily life events. A wonderful poetic writer, St. Gertrude, a monastic from the Middle Ages, describes in, in her journal an experience of mysticism. After prayer with the community, she goes out into the garden and sits for a while on a beautiful day, like many of us would like to do. And as she's sitting in the garden, a place where she's probably gone many times, She's observing the trees, the flowers, the shrubs, the birds, maybe there are squirrels. And as she's taking in this natural beauty, 
she becomes aware that it's a moment of grace, that there's some fundamental goodness and gift in that moment. And as she explores that, she begins to encounter the divine and expresses thankfulness for, for the presence of the divine as she's experiencing it in the garden. That's a moment of mysticism. It's not unlike my own experience of going out my front door and walking up the driveway to get the mail at the mailbox at the end of the driveway. And going out on that little walk, looking up and seeing the very tall trees in my neighborhood and above them the sky and clouds and being caught up in a sense of wonder with how grand everything around me is, how grand the world is, and how I'm there and connecting with something of life, the essence of life, even though I feel small and puny in that context. That's an experience of mysticism in daily life. It's not just about nature. Hafiz, the Persian Sufi poet, writes eloquently about having these experiences with the one he calls his beloved. He writes about dancing all night with his beloved, encountering that union with the beloved through connections with strangers in the marketplace, uses images of the, that sense of union, of coming together, and compares it to the experience of being in a tavern and drinking and everyone singing together, to the experience of lovers wrapped together in the embrace of their love. Hafiz understood this sense of the divine, this connection, this union and communion in ordinary life. He saw it all around him. And so do the other mystics. They do it in different ways. Meister Eckhart was much more of an academic, and he writes about it in academic terms. You know, Abraham Heschel wrote about it in terms of his experience of awe and wonder, which is something I really relate to. But it's there in the writings of the great mystics. How we get there is by tending to our spiritual growth, to our spiritual development by rooting ourselves in spiritual practice, meditation, and contemplative practices, things that allow us to go into deep quiet, into deep silence, that open our heart and open us up on the inside. And as we are open to be mindful of what's happening around us, to be present in the moment, and it's by being open and present that we have the opportunity to experience these mystical moments in daily life. And all the mystics see that this is part of our spiritual growth and development. If you're trying to understand this more for what that means in your life, maybe spiritual direction will be helpful. So reach out to me and we can talk about that. And if you don't want to work with me, I can help you find somebody. But spiritual direction can be very helpful in this area. In the meantime, really consider what it means for you to enter that realm of mysticism, to continue to grow and nurture that contemplative aspect of your life. Be sure to subscribe to this channel. Like the video, make some comments, share it with others, and know that I really appreciate the time you spend on Spirituality Beyond Borders. Thank you and have a really great day.